Alright. Hey, hey, it is back. So we're going to continue Bird. So we are still in chapter 3. First of all, by the way, sorry my voice is not best. I. My nose has just been sneezing and stuff. Lots of it. I don't know. It's the allergies or it's freaking cold that's going around and everyone's catching. Because I am around a lot of people with the cold right now. But, anyways, let's contact you. Alright, so. The, we got down to. Let recap. We got down to the, the hangar. And here in Marcus, and then you have to go back up and, you know, get it unlocked. But we have to give one of them the gun. Um. Well, I would say Amy, just because she's probably more level headed than Marcus would be. I had Amy the rifle, and she turns to go. Marcus gives me a concerned look, but follows along behind her. Once Amy and Marcus mixed to a good distance down the hallway, Dennis lets out a nervous laugh. And then there were two, he says. Dennis looks much better, but still, but he still needs to use a wall to stay standing. Didn't Amy say that there were guns and emergency kits in the maintenance room near the hangar doors? I asked. Yeah, I think so, Dennis says, looking exhausted. I look ahead and see a door to the right that reads maintenance. Might as well give it a try. I go to the door to open it and find that it's locked. Um. Let's just kick it down. Scooter shoulder. I give it a frustrated kick, but it doesn't budge. I'm about to try again, but that's when I hear a gunshot from just down the hallway. But first thought is that Amy and Marcus have come upon one of those one of those things, one of the monsters. But I don't hear any of that strange static sound I've come to associate with them. Alarm bells go off in my head, and before I know it, I'm heading back down the hall, away from the hangar doors. Well, that happened. Stay here, I'll be right back, I whisper with my shoulder to see if you can figure out how to get into that maintenance room. Where are you going, he asks. I didn't bother answering him as I bound through the door where Amy and Marcus went. So there's trouble in foot with Amy and Marcus and the gun. When let's put it. God look at this blood. Blood all over the place here. As I enter the bike camera room and start walking between the massive silos, I wonder what classified chemicals could be inside of them. I am fully expecting one of Amy's creatures to come flying out from the intersection of halls up ahead. I think I overhear a voice, a woman's voice. It's Amy. Stop! Let go of the gun! I run ahead so fast I almost trip over two people in a life or death struggle. My mind tries to process what I'm seeing, but it makes no sense. Not at all. Marcus is wrestling with Amy, trying to take her gun away. When this doesn't work, he throws her to the ground and starts choking her. Her face is turning purple, and her eyes look like they might pop out of her head. Marcus sees me coming out of the hallway, but asks him what he's doing is perfectly normal. Stop him. He's lost him. I'm gonna fucking tell him. I start rushing towards him before I really know what I'm doing. I bring my fist down in a hard arc across the bridge of his nose and, and reward it with a sick cracking sound. He cries out as he falls to the ground, looking up to see at me as if he doesn't understand why I punched him. On the floor, Amy clutches at her neck and grasps for breath. I start to fear that I was a moment too late just to see that the rifle has been thrown across the floor. Marcus is noticing this exact same moment that I do. Oh. When we go to the rifle, we probably have to end up fighting him, anyways. So let's hit him first. Then we'll go for it. I deliver a surprisingly strong blow from my right hand, clipping his chin from my awkward position. I am in the process of planting a knee in his chest to hold him down when his left foot comes out of nowhere and lands hard. Ugh. Ow. The kick catches me swirly in the ribs, knocking the breath out of me. What the hell are you doing? He yells at me. I'm killing her on saving us. All of this was her fault. I sense I truly believe this. If that's the case, then why not just attack her when we're all together? The answer is simple. We might have stopped her, which I'm doing now. He wanted to kill her in private. And then what? Would he have done the same to this me? It seems fitting, really. When he first came apart from Marcus, he held a gun on us. I, I had been so relieved to see another human being that I underestimated just how unhinged he was. Marcus and I both died for the rifle, still laying on the floor. We start wrestling for position, but I'm not confident I'll come away with it. As you start struggling, he starts inching the muzzle of the gun towards the face, a position I do not want to be in. I start pushing back hard. But if this thing accidentally fires, I'm not so sure where I prefer the book to go, especially in a room full of chemical tanks. Uh, chemical tanks? I do not want them to explode, so we're just going to get it to Marcus. I grunt as I push the muzzle point towards his face. Rising, he's literally looking down the barrel of a gun. Marcus ducks his head out of the way. This makes him lose leverage, allowing me to yank the gun from his grip. I get to my feet as quickly as I can. Swing the rifle back around him. 
For a moment, I think I've knocked him out, but his eyes flutter and he looks at me like as if I betrayed him. Her people, he says. It was them that did this. She deserves to die. She did this. I look to Amy and wish I could help her. I am ready to see that she's managing to draw in a few breaths. Her legs move as she tries to push herself into a sitting position. You wouldn't know, Marcus says. You didn't work under the secrecy. You don't know what it was like to. He surprises me when lunging towards me, leaving from the floor like a human projectile. I don't have time to get kicked me. I have to react fast. I'm gonna dodge him for right now. His name is poor and is starting to study, so I dodge him easily. I don't want to have a gunshot go off and alert those creatures to where we already had one and we don't need two. Make a hard jab at the butt of the rifle, strike him in the chest. Something crunches and he lets out a whoosh of air. He crumbs for a moment and then goes to his knees. He roars in pain on the floor. Only after a few moments I realize that they are not purely screams of pain. The bastard is calling for him, calling for those creatures to come for us. This place is evil, along with everyone involved, he rails on the floor. If you're taking her side, then you deserve to die too. If you want to stop me, you better do it now, you coward. The rage in his eyes at Amy, as well as worries me for stopping him, makes me think that he will deliver on his threat. I raise the rifle again, every urge of my body wanting to make sure he doesn't come back to bite us. But I am not a body man. I could easily not kill him and just leave him behind. We're gonna let him live for now. But if he doesn't give if he, he goes he does this again, then I probably would have to force him to kill him. Just so he doesn't continue hurting us and get us in trouble. Just like when I could barely shoot earlier, he was coming at me. I can't bring myself to deliver a kill shot. I ignore him and lean down in. You okay? I ask. She not slowly. Have to go, she says, her voice raspy. They'll be here any minute. Too much noise. I have to hold her arms so she can get to her feet. We start forward and I think of Dennis. We should go back to the hangar doors and say, I can't just leave Dennis there. There's no time, he says. You need to come with me up to the command center now. We'll be back for him soon. You're all dead now anyway, Marcus shrieks. If they don't get you, I will. He laughs maniacally after saying this, wounding at the man with As in response, a high-pitched noise tears through the hallway. I seem to fill it in my bones. Following his noise now, Amy says, her ghost's voice still weak. She takes off away from Marcus, presumably toward the, the elevator she had mentioned a moment ago. I follow her. As we move out, I hear Marcus slowly push herself off the ground, stumble off, slipping in between the tanks and disappearing. We start running, and after the first few strides, another noise comes out. It sounds mechanical, but at the same time, it also reminds me of the recordings I've heard from whale songs. The sound of metallic, creaking, crashing echoes through the door I came in through. They've reached a hydraulic door before, Amy says, confirming what I'm thinking. The sound grows louder as it clears. As it's clear, they're struggling with it, which is good. We have a bit more time. I speed up a step to follow Amy as she leads the way to the other elevator. She's panting fiercely but pushes on. I can hear something rattling in the rough, literally likely the result of Marcus' attack. This makes me imagine how cold, how his cold and caring eyes must have looked, staring out at her as he tried to deliver her to death. How is she still forging on is beyond me. I'm sorry about Marcus, I said. I... It's not your fault, she interrupts. At least you handed me the gun. I just hope we can find a way to survive this mess. We'll be fine. We're, we're gonna... Ah. Here we go. I'm not so sure, she says, her eyes fixed straight ahead. I'm not sure I can leave her. I just wanted to say something encouraging, I guess. We finally come to the elevator, the end of the row of silos. The elevator door slide open slowly. At that moment, we hear something behind us. A strangled sort of whistling sound. We step inside and turn around to face the bio camera. Thankful we've been given a few moments to spare. The elevator doors remain open for three seconds before they start to slide close again. In those three seconds, I see a large shape floating towards us. A phosphorescent light, white glow, outlines a possible shape. Behind it, I see another shape that's also into the bio camera, and another. The third one breaks away from the other two, taking a quick right. It moves with eerie speed. That is the direction Marcus has gone. Honestly, the thought of them hunting him down doesn't bother me in the slightest. Amy's pressing a button to close the elevator doors over and over, but they stay open for what seems like an eternity. I curse her design these damn doors. So we can hide inside the elevator, stand the doorway ready to shoot. Now, they haven't seen us yet, so we're gonna hide a little more? Amy and I slide ourselves up against the sides of the elevator, trying to avoid being seen, but I can't help peeking around the corner. I hold the rifle steady, ready to fire, and that's when I see them in clear light for the first time. I can see their features, their shape, and their colors, but mine can't quite process it at all. 
Nothing about them makes any sense. My eyes try to see a squid, but that's not what these things are. They are gray and white, and seem to be nothing more than squirming light. Their appendages are neither legs nor tentacles, but somewhere in between. They don't walk on these appendages. They use them to glide. They move like ghosts and seem to jerk every few feet or so. I'm pretty sure that this jerking effect is not the result of the moving, but my mind's inability to understand how they are moving exactly. It also appear it's also more than the appearance that makes a mockery of reality. The light around them seems a bit inward, as if the space within the room has to reshape itself for their existence. That particular effect on the air makes the movement seem like something is moving in the water, only faster. They screech in union unison as they rush towards the elevator. They may inside here in another few seconds. I check the rapidly seat of my ammo and it's just launching. I start saving my shots. I'm gonna have to be choosing. Um there's only two shots per now. So we're gonna try see if we slow them. If we kill him, we kill him. Uh, not about a foot remains between the side doors. I find my muscles reacting indistinctly again. I pull the trigger. The shot fills the elevator and there's thunder in my ears. I hit the thing in the center. The reaction is not what I expect. The monster pauses and spasms for about two seconds. Its body of light flickers for a moment, similar to a light bulb on the brink of burning out. My finger keeps pulling the trigger. The throb of the right foot of my hands is comforting, and each screech the creature is like music. Then I realize that this only seems to be slowing it down. Its tentacles seem to tighten and then loosen, like a weird muscle reflex. But then it's on the move again, unharmed by the shots. Finally, the elevator door closes. The creatures wash against the other side of the door, making an electrical noise crying out in anger. Oh. Oh. The tips of those spider-like pinches poke through the wall and the elevator door, but for some reason they can't get all the way through. Amy screamed at this and curls into the bottom, the far corner of the elevator, crying. I say nothing to her, I just cling to the rifle. Hoping those creatures don't find Dennis as he waits by the hanging doors where I've left him. For his sake and ours, we need to get them open. Now. Alright. So that's the end of chapter 3. What is your results? Alright. So. The blunt truth. You at 59% of players don't tend this. Didn't this. He'd probably be fine. So like half of us. So now you and 35% of slayers slide it, side it with Amy on pulling their hydraulic door. Not very much there. Who to trust? You and 69% of players gave it. Wow, almost everyone gave a gun to Amy. You and 58% of players left Marcus alive, so half of it. You and 32% of players used your ammo and took the extra shots of the creatures. So that's that's not a big one for that one. But let's just start chapter 4. Alright. The ride up to the elevator is tense. I take a series of deep breaths, doing everything I can to stay in control. Amy has gone back to her feet, but her head is pressed against the elevator wall as she suppresses a series of sobs. I find myself trying to remember the way those creatures looked, but my mind seems to shudder at the effort. I've seen something that is an impossibility, a mockery of what I know is real. Is real. This fills me with a terror as that dwarfs anything else I have felt since discovering the facility. I try to focus my mind on something else and remember Marcus' threats. I wonder if we see Marcus again. Say he'll save himself. Do you think Marcus got away from those things? He asks me. I, I really don't think so. I, I hope I kind of do. Me too, she says. Look at the route her arms folded. So, I say, how did you end up here? She gives a nervous chuckle and shrugs. I used to work at the Pentagon. It was some pretty upper echelon stuff that I still can't discuss. I see this place as a more upper echelon, I said. This place is even on scale, she answers. My other job was a cakewalk compared to this. Then why stay, I ask. Because the money is ridiculous. I have a 13 year old daughter already talking about Harvard. You didn't math. That's ambitious. I could ask my other kids, but that's ambitious. Oh, I know. She's a force of nature. Her dad ran off when she was three. So for a long time, it's just been her and me. Amy pauses before continuing softly. What if I never see? Her voice breaks off into words too terrible to say. Her eyes filled with tears. The elevator comes to a stop. It's like a thing of, a in of it interrupting the moment. Amy hastily wipes her eyes and we have no time, waste no time getting it and getting back inside the commander. Alright. 
We're back at the command center. Are you ready the rifles? Certainly certain that there are more of those creatures waiting for us in the hallway of the second level. The way is clear, allowing us to haul ass to the command center. So they probably haven't made it up here then. Once again, I found myself staring at the screen that shows my ruined work site. Okay, okay, Amy says, typing commands roughly. It can't be that hard. I keep peeking over my shoulders. My sense is a feeling as if the monsters are sneaking up on us mere inches away. I then think of Dennis and wonder how he's faring back on level 3. Is he safe? I look back to the screens and see that Amy has finally found what she's looking for. A prompt to the screen says, Override of hangar doors and all level 3 locks requires clearance code. Amy types in a number with shaking fingers and the screen, grow screen grows black for a minute. Moment. The moment the words override confirmed comes up on the screen, Amy jumps up from the chair and heads out the room. We have to be quick, she says. We have exactly 20 minutes to open those hangar doors. Well, it just give me a minute. I don't want to know what happens in 20 minutes. I follow her out of the command center and bound back down the hallway towards the same elevator that brought us here. Amy punches the elevator button and the doors slide open. We're taking the same elevator back to the biochem room, I ask. Those creatures are still down there. It's the only way back down, she says. The other way is blocked by those hydraulic doors we pulled. Hopefully the creatures left. Hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. Neither of us say anything else as we shared of looking at a mid dread. We step back into the elevator and head back down to the biochem room on level 3. Let's just hope those guys or the creatures are not still there. We don't need them there. As the elevator doors open, we peer out, looking to see if the creatures are still in the area. It's all clear. When Amy looks to see, looks to me, her eyes are clear and strong. Marcus wasn't entirely wrong. Amy says we start walking back towards the hangar doors. About what? I ask. About how I am partially to blame for this. What? You got the reports for it. You didn't actually do it. Some of the things we do here is scary. We should have known that one day something like this would happen. Everyone here acknowledged what goes on in level 3 is to blame, she says. It's a highly advanced research facility, I said. Doing amazing but risky stuff. So yeah, you're partially to blame by just working here, but I can stand their de dedication. So why don't you tell me a bit about more what he does what does go on in level 3, I ask. Are you familiar with the large Hadron Collider over in Switzerland? I've heard the phrase, but that's about it, I said. It's a powerful particle accelerator, she explains. Right now, they're using it to try and create what's called dark matter. It's theorized that the dark matter is actually makes up the majority of the universe, but parts of the universe are very different from ours. I guess it's about is the people at the LHC will probably create their first dark matter particle in about 2018 or 2019. Here in this facility, we were able to create one almost 10 years ago, but it's the key to do our research. What is it? Uh, this is how they do something with those things. Yeah, because I would ask what was about it, but we need to know what those things. Well, we still don't know all there is about dark matter or other matter we have yet to identify. Those creatures could be made of it, or maybe there is some even more exotic matter. We just don't know. If dark matter is responsible, there are no real answers to have. I scratch my head. So you're saying this dark matter helps with what? Open up other dimensions or something? That's the theory, she says. During the point to point of transfer, subjects are gone for about three to six seconds. There's no way to see or measure the presence, but they exist somewhere. From what we can tell, they exist in that kind of void. Have you done it with people? We have sent human subjects through. Almost all of them ha have returned successfully. I make an involuntary grimace. Almost? There was one man, Dr. Kahana, who didn't return. We don't know where. She trails off, taking a moment to lift herself. Sorry I asked, I say, feeling my mind start to bend inward again. As we continue to walk between the silos, we walk past the area where we left Marcus behind, but he's long gone. Maybe he found a way out. I realize that we are walking very close together between the silos, perhaps trying to create the illusion of safety. We reach the exit connecting to the hangar doors where Dennis hopefully still is. My guts clench and my heart hammers in my chest as we open the door and walk through. I lift the rifle, but first it seems there is nothing waiting for us. And that's where the scene of the glowing hawking shape to my left. Closing in fast. Oh boy. There's blood on the hangar door. The creature is about 10 feet away and coming quickly. This will be the first thing that comes to mind. 
I drop to the ground, make myself a smaller target, and raise the rifle. I'm not sure if I should just unload on the bastard or try to choose me. To be choosing my shots and making it, or at least slow it down. Should to kill? Well, I don't know if we can. I know there is a way you can get it. But. We can hit party from too much, so let's. Kill it? The beast is less than a foot away from me when I start firing rapidly. I don't know what is out. The gunshot of the high pitched screeching as the creature staggers. With that, it seems to turn and jerk away. Parts of it appear and disappear. Every few feet, it moves down the hall and out of sight. Apparently, even several rounds of bullets are only enough to slow these things down. I look quickly around for the others, but there's only Amy. She looks at them where the monster went with wide eyes. Her face is pale and wonder if she, like me, she's able to feel her mind trying to retreat. Uh, let's ask her if she's okay before we get with it. Yes, Amy says, I'm fine. But if she feels anything like I feel, I don't believe her. Come on, I say, let's find Dennis and get through this hangar doors. Amy glances at her watch and nods. We're already down in six minutes. God damn it. I turn towards the hangar doors and I'm literally, I'm literally disgusting myself because the bloody scene that shocked me, so shocked me before announcing his mouth. Amy goes to work at the computer console at the side of the door. She starts punching the keys before saying, This is going to take some time. I thought you were only unlocked when I asked. I did, she says. For this door, there's still security permissions I need to have. Marcus wouldn't know how to do this if he was a douche. She trails off, and I decided to work. Suddenly, something snaps to me. I feel my feet leave the floor, and I'm literally thrown across the concrete. I look at the time to see one of the creatures. If it's apparent, apparently in no hurry to attack me again, focus on Amy instead. She's not armed. I need a cup with the pan to get this thing away from her so she can focus on getting the door open. Phone! It raises one of its flickering appendages, making me certain that part of its makeup is pure light and energy. I could easily take a shot from a rifle, but my mind again goes to how much remaining ammo I have. The only other thing I can think of is to get them to chase me and get away from the room somewhere. It's distracting. I'm not going to waste the ammo. Hey! I yell. Right here! Come get me! I'm the one that shot your buddy! It turns to me and I'm again faced with staring at something that has no business in the world, in this reality. Its body gives off a sort of a glow around the search part, a bulbous core that is branched off into two humps, very much like a spider. Again, I sense that this visual information is not accurate, but it's the best my officer of mine can, make, can do to make sense of this impossible creature. It starts lurching towards me, lets out a shriek of agony that makes me, my ears feel like it, they're exploding. Now that I'm sure it's coming up for me, I take off running and head to another hallway we haven't been down. I found myself in an industrial looking area, and I'm pleased to find that the monster has fallen me through. Which is it's good. Amy gets another time. I don't know if they've been through this area yet. So let's go. This room seems to have a assortment of old pipes and tanks. I assume some of them run further down to the other areas of the vicinity. With the creature on my tail, I dash into it with the maze of metal, hoping to lose it. It's definitely having a harder time squeezing through than I am. And that slows it down. Of course, the room is not a cage of any kind that thinks it is still hidden towards me, shredding through the pipes as it rages. I notice that sometimes it is breaking the steel girders, but other times it seems that it is somehow merging, changing. The pipes that were separate are now connected together in a way that makes my head hurt. I finally get a good amount of distance between myself and the creature. I think it's lost my trail. I need to get back to those hanging doors. There's not much time before the door shut. But if I make a sound, that creature could be on the hills again. We're gonna hide and escape quietly so the creature doesn't see us. Hear us. I take care to stay silent, twisting myself through some more pipes and making my way back towards the door I entered through. The creature doesn't seem to pick up on us. I see his glowing back as I come around. Let's out a static scream that makes my insides feel like jelly. But I don't even look back. I slide quietly through the rest of the obstacle course and tiptoe back to the hangar doors. Is there any if I run? It's gonna hear me, and it's just gonna right back at us. It's easier to not get it all attracted as much. I burst back into the large room to see Amy still working on the computer terminal by the hangar doors. You okay? I asked Amy. I can clearly see your battery for control of her facilities. Doctor needs that facilities. Zero determination wins out, and she goes a grim nod. Any sign of where Dennis went? I ask, hoping she hasn't noticed his body smell. No, she replies. It's then that I realize I have no idea how many rounds I have remained in the, uh, the rifle. This isn't a model I'm familiar with. I was asked some deer hunting, I'm not much of an expert of firearms. 
Still, I'm able to locate the chamber easily and see that there are only two rounds left. Well, crap. I sadly cursed myself for being too trigger happy earlier. How are we on time, Aster? Two minutes, I'm going as fast as I can, she says. Amy does her best to focus on the keyword, but there's still no sign of Dennis. Before I have time to look around, a screeching sound here it erupts from the other end of the room. I bring the rifle and shoot a stance and turn around. With the hangar doors right behind me, no sign of Dennis, and I close the window of time, I have to be confident. When, yet, when two monsters come around the corner, my body wants to shut down. The appendages seem to jump in time and space, reaching out for a split second, independent of the body and then disappearing back to where they came from. He turns and screeches him, the glowing tentacles sneaking out of his body, my knees tremble in controlably. Behind me, Amy shrieks. I feel myself tell, lose the control, my mind sliding into the abyss of insanity. I pull myself back from the break. I've got to stay in control. Ugh. Those. Um. I got two shots. Turn away? Oh, I don't think it's good. I can stand here and use my last two shots, but what good would that do? So instead, I turn to face the hanging doors. How much longer before you can open these things? Not long, she says, fusing and typing to the terminal as the command flood the screen. Grants flood the screen. I doubt it, I think himself. So. Can I do anything to help? I ask. She doesn't know to answer, deep in concentration. I turn back around, see a looming shape appear. The creature comes around the corner, screaming out that static like sound. I step away from Amy and hang your doors towards the monster, ready to defend her. I ready my rifle, but the creature wastes no time. It makes what that jerky motion towards me, and there's a sharp pain in my chest as it collides with me. Or through me. It's hard to tell. My instinct is to try to grapple or hold the thing down, but then I realize I don't even know if that will work. Um. I mean, I don't really want to grab the creature, so let's just try to get away. I figured I'd rather not try to learn more about the physical nature of this thing right now. I tuck and roll away from it and stand up to face it. With a scream of defiance, I raise a rifle and put around in the score. The shot lands dead center, and the light side of it flickers almost with fire on it. Falls back against the wall, issuing a hiss of its telltale static voice. It's dead, jerks away, and retreats, at least for now. Another terror appears uh, if out of nowhere, screaming at me with its high pitched whine. It bounds for charging its strange must be. I am the right button to take this one at the core, too. I take several shots, but it's still coming at me. As I slams it to me, I pull the trigger again. Really, the rifle is now empty. On contact, the wind is knocked out of my lungs, and the back of my head strikes the floor. My naive things is as alarming as the fact that the beast is on top of me. The exterior is like a seashell that is pounded by the surface. Surf for so long that it has lost all edges and bridges. The grip it tries to capture me with is pure violence. I feel this light soaked pinches start to wrap around it. I raise the rifle, knowing it is empty, but hoping to use as a wedge to push the thing off me. The weight of the monster is erratic. One man would feel weightless, and another feel like I'm going to be crushed. I push upwards with the rifle. The monster budges a bit and almost seems to absorb it, wrapping in its grip. I see the core of his body, a spider like shape, connected to the rest of it by thin white strings of tissue. I'll be dead within seconds unless I can find it, bend it off, or get some help. Okay. We'll just leave it at that for now. So, I know, like in the middle of a fight, we're just gonna end it. But, um, yeah. So, we finished up the three. We go on to chapter four. Things are going to shit now. Hopefully the hangar doors will actually get open soon. But um Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry if I it's like not really the best, but I'm still gonna make the videos no matter what. It must come out. And I wanna continue this story. I actually did. But Thank you so much for watching. I will leave a link in the comment in the description below if you want to go play this yourself or if you have not if you're already playing it. How did you go how did you fare in chapter group? Were you part of a high percentage or lower percentage? I was kind of mixed about some of those things. But um yeah, leave a comment below, tell me what other games you want me to play. If you want to see well of course you want to see what it finishes anyways. But um I hope you have a great day. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Nah, I need tea. Ow! What the hell? No! Come on!
That's just the I was on the bus. I'm now on the level five. I'll get you over there. gonna make any progress. What is this? Literally. Okay. Shoot. Hey, silly one. Alright, double. Last.